Paints come in all different colors and price points, but I was curious to know what is the most expensive and rarest paints throughout history that have ever been made. I did a little bit of research and this is what I found. Number 10, Cerulean Blue. Although not as expensive as some of the other pigments on this list, Cerulean Blue made from cobalt stannate can be still relatively costly. Cerulean Blue was first created and used as a watercolor. In the late 1870s, the color was finally manufactured into an oil paint, becoming very popular with artists including Claude Monet, Paul Signac, and Picasso. Number nine, Dragon's Blood Red. A red pigment prized for the best part of two millennia and discussed by apothecaries, alchemists, and painters alike. It was said to be a mixture from coagulated blood of dragons and elephants collected from the place where the beast fought and died together. In reality, dragon's blood red pigment was actually obtained from the sap of certain plants, particularly Dracaena species. Number eight, genuine Naples yellow. The authentic version made from lead antimonate can be relatively expensive. However, its popularity declined and it was progressively replaced by other yellow pigments. Manufacturers today typically produce Naples yellow in combination with other pigments such as ochre, iron oxide, lead white, titanium white, or zinc white, rather than pure lead antimonate. Rose matter genuine. Attained from the root of the matter plant, genuine rose matter can be expensive due to its labor-intensive process. Rose matter genuine is still manufactured in traditional ways to meet the demands of the fine art market. Number six, mummy brown. While not commonly used today, historical pigments like mummy brown made from actual ground up Egyptian mummies were both rare and macabre. Mummy brown was extremely popular from the mid 18th to the 19th centuries. However, fresh supplies of mummies diminished and artists were less satisfied with the pigment's permanency and finish. Today, Mummy Brown cannot be bought from any paint shop. In 1964, Time Magazine did report that the sole distributor of the pigment, London color maker C. Robertson, had run out of mummies a few years prior. A tube of Mummy Brown pigment purchased from Robertson in early 1900s is on display at the Forbes Pigment Collection of the Harvard Art Museum. Number five, Genuine Indian Yellow. Traditionally derived from the urine of cows fed on mango leaves, Genuine Indian Yellow is rare and has historical significance. Indian Yellow produced a clear, deep, and luminescent orange-yellow color, which, due to its fluorescence, appears especially vivid and bright in sunlight. Number four, Genuine Vermilion. True vermilion is synonymous with brilliant, bright, warm red orange hues. Made from mercury sulfide, it's rare, can be costly, and is toxic. Today's vermilion is made with a synthetic pigment, has less impurities, but is still very toxic and should be handled with great care. Number three, cobalt colors. Cobalt blue and cobalt violet are examples of colors that can be expensive due to the use of cobalt, a relatively rare metal. Cobalt blue became a very popular color for painting skies when artist John Varley suggested it as a substitution for ultramarine. Number two, cadmium colors. Colors like cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and cadmium orange are known for their intensity and have been relatively expensive due to the cost of the cadmium metal. Now, cadmium is toxic to humans and other animals in very small amounts, especially when it is inhaled. However, because the pigments have some desirable qualities such as resistance to fading, some adult artists continue to use them to this day. Number one, lapis lazuli. Historically, the vibrant blue pigment derived from the semi-precious stone lapis lazuli has been one of the most expensive pigments. At the end of the Middle Ages, it was exported to Europe where it was ground into a powder and made into ultramarine, the finest and the most expensive of all the blue pigments. What was your favorite color on this list? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more videos on fun art facts or art history. If you want to learn more about paint or you're interested in painting and you want to get a color that you can buy in this day and age, check out the video over to my side where you can learn more about the Gamblin 1980 series. And I'll see you over there. Check you later and peace.